Action News at 5.30 on NBC24 with Ellen Marsden, Kira Klepper, AccuWeather with Chief Meteorologist Chris Kuyper, and Gerard Moncure with Sports. As school children throughout the North State continue to make their way back from summer vacation, many teachers are preparing for the possibility they could lose a week of class time. Action News reporter Brian Callahan joins us now with a look at why a drop in the state's revenue could force an early end to the school year. Brian? Well, Alan and Kira, the whole situation comes out of last month's budget deal that called for $4 billion in new revenue to close the state's $26 billion deficit. But a clause buried inside that deal has school officials concerned. While revenues may be down, that's happened before, where they dip in a quarter and then they restore themselves in the next quarter. So it could, it could come back. School officials are taking a close look at the state's tax revenues, which are more than $500 million below expectations. That's because they're facing a huge cut if those revenues drop by $2 billion. If that happens, lawmakers have given districts the power to shorten the school year. But officials say that wouldn't save them money because they've already signed contracts with teachers unions. We have the option, of course, of having to reduce the school year, but we don't have the option of reopening contract negotiations under the current contract we have with the teachers union. Since they can't cut teachers' pay, school officials say cutting days from the schedule would only hurt their bottom line because they would lose attendance fees. I think that there's really no benefit to shorten the school year if we don't have the ability to also reduce salaries proportionately. Even if those triggered cuts go into effect, Chico Unified officials say they will be able to cover the shortfall with money from the district's reserves. We kind of know where our cushion is. 11-12 um, isn't our problem. Our problem will be the future years out, and a lot of that is on a year-by-year -year basis. Schools aren't the only one facing cuts. Local libraries, colleges, and law enforcement would all lose money before school districts if the state misses those projections. Live in the newsroom, Brian Callahan for Action News. Thank you, Brian, for that report. The California Republican Party says it will file a petition seeking a referendum to overturn newly approved state Senate districts. The party will submit ballot language to the Secretary of State's office tomorrow. The group will need to collect about 505,000 valid signatures to qualify the measure for the June 2012 ballot. The Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission, which was created by voters, approved California's new congressional and legislative maps today. California lawmakers could act on pension reform legislation as early as this week. Legislative leaders are considering several changes, including limiting a practice known as pension spiking, which artificially inflates retirement benefits by boosting pay at the end of an employee's career. They also might seek a hybrid system that combines elements of traditional pensions and investment accounts that do not guarantee benefits. Republican lawmakers have been advocating pension reform all year, but Democrats have killed most GOP-backed pension bills. The California Department of Public Health says cases of whooping cough remain high in 2011 compared with many past years, but they are declining from mid-2010 when the largest epidemic since 1950 struck the state. As of last Wednesday, there had been just over 2,100 cases of whooping cough this year. No deaths have been reported so far this year. Last year, there were 10 infant deaths from the highly contagious illness. Public health officials are urging parents to make sure their kids' vaccinations are up to date ahead of the start of the new school year. Now, those immunizations are required for California middle and high school students, and that policy is causing some confusion in the North State. Action News reporter Britt Carlson explains how local schools are measuring up. Britt? Well, Alan, you may remember last year California experienced the largest outbreak of pertussis or whooping cough in 50 years. The Chico Unified School District is well aware of the immunization change, and now they're trying to get the message out to parents. <coughs> The whooping cough is a nasty respiratory illness that took California by surprise in 2010. Health officials called it the worst epidemic in 50 years with 7,800 confirmed cases and 10 infant deaths. A lot of the cases were coming because uh, adolescents were getting the infection and then they were spreading it to other people. Enter the California legislature, which made the pertussis vaccine Tdap required for 7th through 12th graders this school year. That became law in July, but Governor Jerry Brown added a 30-day extension to allow parents to get their kids the shots instead of missing school. There's been conflicting messages and of course uh, Governor Brown didn't sign the uh, legislation SB 614 until shortly before our school year started. 
giving the Chico Unified School District a matter of days to inform parents of the vaccine requirements and extension, fueling more confusion. A couple dozen students here at Fairview High School thought they couldn't come the first week of school because they didn't have the Tdap shot. That's far from the case. In fact, students in the district have until September 9th to get the vaccination. When we were making phone calls home, Trying to figure out why some students weren't coming to school, we heard a significant number saying, well, we thought we couldn't come because we didn't have a TDAP. 60% of the enrolled middle and high school students meet the vaccination requirements. The district is planning another clinic and urging the remaining 40% to get the shot from their doctor or pharmacy to stop another epidemic from happening again. Tentatively scheduled for August 29th. For more information, we've set up a link to Butte County Public Health's website. For Action News, I'm Britt Carlson. Thank you, Britt, for clearing all that up. Students in Shasta County will have a chance this week to get vaccinated against whooping cough for just $10. Tdap vaccines, which are required for all students entering the 7th through 12th grade, will be offered on Wednesday for $10 at a special public health clinic at the Veterans Hall in Reading from 2 to 7 p.m. The reduced price has been extended to all students insured or not because of extra vaccines provided by the state. For more information, call 225-5590. Well, it was a parent Friday, and now the final numbers confirm it. The Summer Classic Blood Drive was a huge success. Blood Source is reporting that 783 people donated blood in Chico, Redding, and Yuba City. This is all on Friday alone. The grand total was up over last year by 154 pints of blood. It was the best turnout in the history of the event. 397 donors turned out in Chico, 205 in Redding. 181 in Yuba City. This was the 10th year for the blood drive, and Action News is proud to have helped. We also want to say thank you tonight to everyone who donated. The city of Corning will soon be home to a multi-million dollar skate and community park. The city was awarded a state grant and recently got the green light to begin construction. Action News reporter Derek Demo met with city officials today and has more on the planning process and what the park will do for the local community. What now sits as unused and undeveloped land will soon be home to a brand new community park near downtown Corning. After the city was awarded a statewide park development and community revitalization grant. We were keeping our fingers crossed. We, we pointed very well within the state point system and uh, again, we were very fortunate to be awarded the grant. The city is one of only 64 California cities and the only city in the North State to be awarded the $4.3 million grant out of the state's more than 500 applicants. The long application process has been underway since March of 2010 and city officials were told last November they would soon be awarded the funding. We've been trying to get a skateboard park together for them for quite a while and just very luckily we got the grant in and got the money for it. We have a good skateboard community here. The 18 and a half acres has already been purchased for the park along Jewett Creek, east of Toombs Avenue and west of Houghton Avenue. The park will include a lighted skateboard and bicycle park, two lighted soccer fields, an amphitheater, a covered gazebo with picnic and barbecue areas, and two playgrounds equipped with basketball and handball courts. Especially the skate and bike park is something Corning definitely needs because we've had some issues with the, the skaters where there's no place for them to skate. There is a worry the park may attract vandals, but park designers hope the plaza style layout and easy road access for police patrols will cut down on the chances. Either way, officials say the park is a welcomed addition to the city. It'll definitely bring something to Corning. We're hoping that the, the money that we have uh, from the grant will make this probably the premier skate and bike park in the North State. In Corning, I'm Derek Demo for Action News. The city is still in the planning process for the park. Construction is scheduled to begin in spring of next year, and the project should take a little more than a year to complete. There's more to come on NBC 24 Action News.